Well, hello, friends and neighbors. Richard, KB5JBV from uh, Resonant Frequencies Amateur Radio Podcast and Richard's Radio Adventures. Uh, thought we'd check in this time with a little, uh, little five star, uh, semi tutorial. I find in a lot of the videos that, uh, the folks that do them tend to go a little fast. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, they're not thinking about it. They're in a hurry. They're kind of nervous. Uh, Sometimes they, uh, well, a lot of times when people are teaching stuff, they tend to think that the people they're teaching are as up on the basics as everybody else. So we're going to go back and do some basic stuff uh, over probably a few different videos. But today I want to talk about updating the firmware on your uh, on your MMDVM hat. Um, now I know there's several of these particular hotspots that have those, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, I actually have a second hotspot I use for uh, experimenting on stuff, so it's going to make it a little easier for y'all to see the difference. If you'll take a look right here, the two things that are most important are that Right now, this one, which has already been updated, uh, is running version 1.4.17 of the firmware for this particular uh, MMDVM hat. I, also, the crystal oscillator is uh, at 14.7456 megahertz. That's going to be important in a little bit. For those of you who want to leap ahead and, and play up ahead of the game, look about right there. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to the other one. This is the one that I use every day. Um, as you can see, different frequencies, but it's basically the same Pi Zero setup. In fact, they're both uh, some of the little Chinese hotspots you get on, the, get on the internet for little or nothing. So if you take a look at this one, we're currently running 1.4.7. Now, it's been a long time since I looked at version numbers on stuff, but I do know that this one has been updated, that one has not. So what we're going to do today is go ahead and update this one, the firmware anyway. And if things go bad, y'all get to see a fiasco on video from Resident Frequency the Amateur Radio Podcast. Those of y'all that have been uh, loyal fans since way back in 06, uh, you'll know that from time to time, we have a mishap here and there on the show. So we're going to go ahead and do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, first of all, we're going to get back in here, and we're going to go ahead and save uh, a copy of the configuration so that if we should have a mishap, well, we're able to get it fixed pretty quick. So those of you who have worked with one of these, you know they run kind of slow. Uh, it'll probably run, I'm told it'll run faster when I update the, uh, uh, update Pi Star, which will be another video in a not too distant future. So we'll go ahead and save that so that we have it. And we're going to go back over, well, we've got to get to the expert mode stuff. So, ah, crap. so we hit expert. When we get here, we go over to HH, SSH access. Now let me slow down a little bit because those of you who normally run Windows or uh, uh, Apple products, I'm not real sure how well it's hidden or kept away from the end user in Apple, but I do know that uh, Windows has gotten to the point that they really do hide this kind of stuff where uh, you can't get into it and mess it up, even though it's yours. So first of all, we need to log in. And the login for these, these little five-star jobbies, tends to be five-star. And then we're going to put in the standard uh, password. And we're in. 
for those of y'all who've been using Windows for years and years, you would call this a command line. Uh, we're currently in a terminal window, and we're going to work from here. The first thing we need to do is, and I will post a link to this page somewhere where y'all can get at it, probably probably with the video uh, and over at the website, uh, either way. So first, we're going to do a, stand, a manual update, which is going to be five star update. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Linux and PyStar is built on, I believe it's built on Debian. Somebody can correct me if I'm uh, wrong, but, you know, somebody will probably say it's Ubuntu, which is built on Debian, or Linux Mint, which is built on Ubuntu, which is built on Linux, or uh, built on Debian. So, uh, basically, we've got a little bit of machine running a little bit of copy of Debian. Now, I want to show y'all this in real time because sometimes I get to wondering, you know, did I do something wrong? It, why is it taking forever? And that kind of stuff. Due to the nature of the processors on these hotspots, they don't run overly fast. And we've gotten used to desktop and uh, tablet computers that do run fairly quickly while they're doing jobs. But it won't take very, it shouldn't take very long with this one because I've tried to keep it up, up to date. Uh, so we're watching it uncrunch and, uh, install some of, some of the software. That right there goes back to the people who say that Debian or uh, Linux in general is a pain in the butt because you have to build everything. Well, that's not the case anymore. It used to be 10 years ago. So while we're waiting for that, our next step is going to be uh, to reboot the machine and we will go ahead and pause while that's going on because it does take a considerable amount of time. Okay, so we've made it to the end of the update and we're going to tell it to reboot. Oops. Uh, and we hit, go ahead and hit enter and off it goes. So this will probably take us a couple of minutes, a minute or two. So let me go ahead and pause right here. Okay, so now we've uh, we've had time for it to reboot. And if we go ahead and click connect, it'll take us right back to the login screen. Now I want to bring you over here a minute. So we take a look at this. We have logged in. We've done the update. We've rebooted. So now, what we're looking at is that uh, we're going to enter some more commands. When you uh, enter the initial commands, or go to update the uh, the firmware, it'll tell you what the current firmware is, and then it'll ask you if you want to continue. If you press continue, It'll go ahead and uh, give you a message about the new firmware that is going to be installed. Don't worry too much about this uh, unless, of course, it doesn't look right to you. And some of you will, some of you won't. So in the case of this one, we need to go ahead and log back in again. So that's going to be... Well, it didn't like that. Let's try it again. Um, like a lot of you fellows, I'm a two-finger typer. So now that we've gotten here, and here's where I was running into some issues earlier because I did a dry run on the practice machine, so I wouldn't hold y'all up too much. In our case, remember earlier we said we had a 14.7456 megahertz um, TXO or uh, crystal oscillator. 
in our case, we're going to use this one here because it is a single hat. It's not dual. Uh, if you go down a little further, there's one that the uh, oscillator is 12, 288, and these are the dual uh, MMDVMs. I know y'all have seen them. I'm, uh, I got a D Star radio I'm thinking about selling so I can uh, get me one of those. So the one we're going to use right now is this one. Because both of these uh, hotspots are identical and I know that that one worked on the other one. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. Come down here to the terminal and go ahead and paste it in. It's going to ask me to bunch stuff here. Paste from browser is what you're looking for. And then we go ahead and paste it in the box. Look back over there and make sure you got all of it and click OK. Now, with any luck, we're going to hit this key and it's going to do like it's supposed to, or we're going to have another one of those embarrassing moments for Richard while uh, trying to get some information out to folks. So here we go. Now, see, we have the previous version number. Uh, MMDVM HS hat version 1.4.7 uh, gives the size, TXO uh, frequency, and a couple other things as far as information. So we're going to go ahead and write this firmware. And it'll take just a second. It doesn't take near as long as an update does. And we should be right back at the prompt fairly quickly. For those of you guys that have been around as long as I have messing with computers and stuff, you just love to watch that hex code run. Good Lord. Anyway, we'll be there in just a moment. It'll also give you some stats on uh, on what's going on inside your equipment. So the flash is complete. So now all we have to do is hit a key and it'll reboot. So I'm going to hit the key. And while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and pause. That way y'all aren't sitting there forever. Okay, so there you are. It's all over but the cried at this point. So let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard. Okay, I can't even talk. And I'm told that there's difficulty. Sometimes there's difficulty when using Windows, which unfortunately I am using now. I'm Linux guy from way back, but I can't see just removing an operating system on a freshly purchased computer unless I have to. So uh, now we go ahead and take a look. It's come back up. It's working like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and go over to admin screen. And yep. Seems to be responding like it's supposed to. Those guys are yakking over on top group 91 on uh, on Brandmeister. And if we go ahead and look down here, now our version number is 1.4.17, whereas before it was 1.4.7. So we've done that. We got the right TXO. It's working. We're receiving. I think if we, uh, it might take me a second to get to get the channel where these guys are talking. But, uh, you know, not as hard as you might think. Let's see if we can spin on down there real quick. Or I could just put this thing in promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode. Sorry, guys. Trying to work on a Texas accent. It's been a while since I've had to worry about it much. Yeah, we we'll just do it that way. No, that's not what we wanted. Y'all hang on a second. Well, all right, guys. I mean, I can see them keying up over on uh, 91, but wait a minute. Nope. That was Jordy in Belfast that did that for junk. Uh, MI6 LLF. Anyway, so it appears to be working like it's supposed to. I really didn't want to take a chance on using this one because I've, as you can see, I've been doing all kinds of things, experimenting with it, and really did not 
want things to go awry while we were uh, recording this particular video. So my words to you guys, y'all go on out there and give her a shot. Uh, the Upside Amateur Radio is uh, most of the fun of the hobby is fixing stuff that we kind of messed up a little. And you learn a lot that way. So with that, I'm Richard, KB5JBV. Y'all uh, hang on for the contact information and uh, let us know what you think.